Hi guys, it's Ray. I am starting a Milky Way. Um, this one's going to be a purple one. So, I'm going to work over a mat and I'm going to do a pretty thin layer of epoxy. Just enough to give the glitter something to hold to. I mixed up 20. I'm probably only going to use about 10, which is probably even too much, but it's um, chilly, so it was a little thick mixing. So I'm going to get this spread out for coverage. And the base layer of this paint doesn't look all that great, but I'm honestly not worried about it because it's all going to get covered. I painted this one inside with my regular paints instead of spray painting outside because the day I did this one um, was super, super cold. So, But it doesn't matter. It's going to get so covered. working it around. The mat is under here just for this step in case I have any drips because I want a clean surface underneath. So I'm going to pull that in a minute. I'm not actually going to leave it under there for the whole process because I do have one little, two little, three little drips of resin and I don't want to put the papers under the glitter into the wet resin so that's the only purpose that's serving right this minute make sure my base and my bottom rim is covered you don't want a lot of resin on this layer because you don't want it you don't want your glitters to travel you want them to pretty stay put. This layer is just an adhesive layer. Alright, so that looks like full coverage. I'm going to take this glove off and get it out of the way. I'm going to quick torch this just to get any bubbles to warm it up a tiny bit. Um, just a tiny bit. I don't want it moving. I'm going to grab a fresh glove just because I don't want to touch my glitters. Okay, so for my glitters, I'm going to use Siren from Two Birds Designs. I'm going to use Jersey from Glitter Bees. I'm going to use Amelia from um, Love All Bling. I'm going to use Pearl from Glitter Bay, which is like a white with a little silver. And I'm going to use Snowflake from Glitter Bees. So that's going to be my five glitters. I like to do my Milky Ways with five, two whites and three colors. I don't have a, and I can't believe I still don't have a solid colored chunky purple. So this one is a shift, but it's um, not a super, super duper shift. One of these days on Immortan Glitters, I will remember to get a, this is getting tons of bubbles coming to the top. So I'm just going to go ahead and torch that again quick. I'm going to start with the purple chunky. I'm going to get this out of the way just so my glitters don't stick. 
I'm going to slide some papers under here. put some of this into a cup to work from just to make it easier. So I'm just going to start towards the middle and bring it down. And wait for it to come around again. And go back over it. And you can let some fall to the bottom because you're going to put the mix all at the bottom anyways. That is enough of that. And I'm going to come in with my dark purple. I'm just going to start. I'll catch the top part when it comes back around again. You can switch your papers in and out and try and save your glitter if you want. I'm not too worried about it. It'll go in my dump cup, dump jar. Just make sure you have good coverage. You can overlap a little bit just to fill in any gaps. But there really shouldn't be too many. This one's in a shaker, so I will just use the shaker. This is a really, really pale lavender, so it's not a true, like, in your face purple, purple. And I don't think this cup's going to get any decals, so I think once I'm done with the Milky Way part, it's going to be done done. I'm going to double check when I see her tonight, but I think she didn't want any kind of decals on it, so... And again, you can go over your color before just to fill any gaps if there were any and to blend the colors a little bit so that's that I'm going to go to my chunky white next I haven't used this color yet so we'll see how it looks on the cup I should say I don't think I've used this one yet. I don't remember using it. So I probably haven't. But we'll see. And because of this style of cup she wanted, this one's going to get interesting at the bottom because the bottom is smaller. So I'm going to actually run out of... Um, space down here for layers quicker than the top. So I'm going to come back in with the fine white. I'm 
I generally do Milky Ways on a um, skinny. So. Just watching it come around again. I mean, like, this is actually going to be this color again right there, so. It'll be interesting to see. So it's going to come around again, and I'm going to go right back to my first color. Kind of try and feather the line down to skinny. I'm going to open it back up at the top a bit, but... Try and apply it with a little more control towards the bottom. I'm going to wait for that top to come around just one more time also. this purple to the lavender, which I am going to actually switch this time so I can get a little better control at the bottom. well and just see how that's covering okay so back to my chunky white Watch it come around one more time again. All right, and then the rest I'm just going to fill with the fine white. So, just going to watch the whole thing a second. So I'm not really going to worry about where this one goes. It'll kind of um, pick up any of the colors as it overlaps anyways. I just want to make sure I have full coverage. Okay. So I'm going to scoop some of the glitter together at the bottom, and I'm just going to pat it right onto the base, just to make sure I get a full coverage on the bottom. Ooh. 
you can try and control your spirals across the bottom. I can't be bothered with that. I like when it gets the mix anyways. Make sure your whole lip is covered too. Okay. So, I'm going to grab a silicone brush and I'm just going to make sure my chunkies are um, sometimes I let these spin a while before I do this, but I think it'll be fine just to go right in this time because there's not a lot sticking up to begin with. But if you watch your sides, you can see where it's popped up and where it needs a little attention. And if you make sure it's padded down pretty well, you'll be able to do a flood coat in three or four hours depending on the resin you use. And then after that flood coat is dry, you can go right into the Milky Way layer. You won't have to um, do a third coat or a fourth coat or any sanding. So I'm kind of watching this side and this side at the same time. And just patting any that are popping up. But overall, I think it's pretty good. And do check your edge to make sure you don't have any big chunky pieces on the bottom. And I also like to run my finger along the lip just to make sure there's no chunkies sticking up where they shouldn't be. Because that can create problems later as well. So... Um, I'm pretty satisfied with that. I will come back in a couple of hours and put that flood coat on. And then we'll take it from there. Okay, I am back to flood coat this one real quick. Um, I decided that this looked really pretty mixed when I dumped it off, so I'm not going to put it in my dump cup. I'm going to keep it. It's probably enough to do a smaller cup entirely, so... I'm going to keep it to the side, mixed as is. I have my resin mixed. I mixed up 30 mLs. Um, it may take every bit of that for the flood coat on this. So I don't seal my glitter when I do the epoxy method to apply the glitter in the first place like I did with this. It really shouldn't move anywhere. There may be a stray here and there, but um, it should all be pretty well stuck down at this point. So, I don't, if it makes you happy to seal it, then you're going to have to let it dry long enough to get to the seal phase. I am flood coating at, um, it's been a little over four hours, I think. So... You wouldn't want to pull it off and seal it at four hours. So that'll change your timing a bit. But I am confident that that is going to cure fully and correctly the first layer. So I am not concerned about flood coating. If you're new to resin and mixing, you may not want to flood coat. You may want to let it dry, not fully cure, but just dry before going on to your next coat. But having done this as long as I have, I am confident that it's safe and fine. So, I'm just going to get that finished up and make sure it's all pretty well covered. And most of my chunky did stay laying down, so that shouldn't be a problem.
once this is dry tomorrow, whatever time I get back to it, um, it'll be ready for the Milky Way phase. And then, I'm like I said, I'm going to find out if this is getting a decal or not, or if it's just going to be as is. I do have one little pop-up one there, but I think it just laid back down, so it should be okay. And a couple here and there aren't going to hurt the Milky Way step anyways. Um, but I'll find out if she wants a decal or not. Otherwise, it's going to get the Milky Way layer and another thin coat, and then it'll be done. If it's getting a decal, I might get the Milky Way layer the decal, and then one to two more thin coats to cover the decal, but I don't want it to get too fat, so she didn't want another skinny cup, she wanted this size, so okay, and I'm going to go ahead and torch this real, real quick. to smooth it out, pop any bubbles. When you're torching, always, always, always keep your torch moving. But that's it, that's the flood coat done. I will be back for the next step. Okay, it is time to do the Milky Way part, and I did verify that this is not getting any kind of text writing, nothing on it. She just wants the basics. So, I'm going to get a thin clear coat on here quick first. I'll scoot these out of the way a second, and we'll get to them in a minute. I have my nitrile gloves on, but I put a vinyl glove over it this time just so I can shuck one and not have to fully change. I'm going to do a thin coat because you don't want too much because you don't want a ton of movement. I did mix up 30 mLs, but I am probably not going to use it all. It's just you have to have enough to mix your micas depending on how many colors you're doing. And I'm going to do three for this one, so I wanted to make sure I had enough. But again, this is going to be a fairly thin coat. A little bit more than you would use for your adhesive layer coat, but not by a lot. So I'm just going to spread it and make sure it's all covered. Let it go around a couple times. This thing is super pretty already. Get just a little bit more. And this is pretty smooth after the flood coat. Um, I'm not feeling any glitter poking up in the main part of the cup. My edge is a little bit rough, but that'll get taken care of. And by a little bit rough, I mean like here, there's one little spot. It's the only one I've felt so far on the entire cup, to be honest. So I'm pretty pleased with that. There's one little spot down here on the lip that um, will fill in. It's not poking up. It's just a little divity spot. So that's got a little thin layer. Um, maybe 12 mLs. So I'm going to take two more medicine cups and I'm going to split this into 
about thirds, I think. So I should end up with about five for each. I don't need a ton. I don't want a ton, so it's fine if it's not exact. So for my colors, and these are from one of those big boxes from Amazon. I'll put a link down below. For my white, I'm going to use the Magical Violet instead of an actual white. I'm going to use Lavender, and I'm going to use Lilac. So, And it is only going to take um, like, it's just going to be a tiny, tiny amount of mica to start. Like this is on a coffee stir, and I'm going to start with that for the 5 mLs. Because you don't need a ton. Some people will use a tiny bit of acrylic paint. If you put acrylic paint in this, this amount, don't even use a full drop. Um, it'll get gummy and stringy. I prefer micas for this. I like the shine to them better than using a paint. I'm going to use this cup that has the most in it for the white. So I'm going to do the other smaller cup for the little. Actually, I'm going to use the lavender in the fullest cup. Because she does want more purple than anything. So I'm going to go ahead and do the lavender for that cup. That I'm going to end up with the most of. And give it a good mix. I would normally tell you to put your micas in the bottom of the cup before your resin. Um, I just didn't. And I'm going to use this. This is going to look mostly white, but if it gets over the purple, it's going to pull the purple a little bit. Um, if it was on a black base, you would see more. But on a lighter base, it'll just show white, mostly. Sometimes they're called magical. Sometimes you'll see them listed as an interference. So. Alright, my micas are all mixed. I'm going to go ahead and start with the lightest color, the lilac. And I want to run this over the white, fairly close to the purple. You just want to do a thin line. You can always add more, but once it's on there, you can't take it back away. So start with less. And I'll get the top half of that swirl when it comes around. I do want some going over the bottom, so. And I think I'm going to run another bead of that one right along the edge of the purple glitter. Watch it come around again. It'll start to move some on its own. Okay. I'm going to come back in with the darker purple and I'm going to run that through the center of the white. Bottom. 
And then I'm going to come in with that lighter white, the interference color. You can see over the purple how it's picked up a lavender color. So, I'm going to set those to the side a second. Now, <clears throat> I am going to hit these with the tiniest, tiniest little bit of heat. Once it starts to move, I'm going to stop. So, I'm going to turn on my heat gun again. Turn up my fan. I don't want to force movement. I just want it to spread a little bit. Kind of pushing it towards the top as I go. Because of the tilt of this cup, it'll kind of naturally work itself back down. So. And this is where I have a tendency to end up overheating, so I'm trying to behave. I don't have the heat setting very high on this. It's um, it's only a half. But take your stick if you want to kind of force them back into line a little bit. I mean, it's going to move and change a little bit as it swirls again, so. through some of it as well. Just because I do want the swirls to kind of follow the swirls. And I do want some of that dark purple in there, I think. I just don't want this big bunches of color at the top like that. That's the only thing I really want to avoid. So. I think. I think at this point I am just going to leave it alone. And let it move and do what it's going to do. And 
around. Hopefully it looks good when it's done. See, it's going to bunch up there a little bit again, but... Um. drag some of that out again. But I think it's going to be pretty. I think she will like it. And it's a little thick in spots now, but as it turns, especially now that it's warmed up, it'll smooth itself out a little bit again. I'm going to wait for this to come around one more time because I don't like how much of that um, lilac is sitting in one particular spot if it hasn't moved by the time it comes around again oh. so I'm going to run some of that magic through it I just don't want any big color blocks All right, well that is it. I will come back and show you how it looks when this layer is dry. She's done off the turner. I think it's pretty. Hopefully she'll like it. That's it. If you want to see the bottom, it's just got that little purple swirl over the glitter. So that's it for this one because it's not getting decals or anything. It is done. It can finish curing and get cleaned up and delivered.